In this video we're going to be looking at this. This is the Lumix 12 to 32 f3.5 to 5.6 super cool little micro lens. Roll credits. <laughs> Hi YouTube, Brian James up Micro Four Thirds guy with you once again and today I'm here to look at this. This is the Lumix 12-32mm to f3.5-5.6. to It looks like a pancake lens. It actually extends out nicely into a really nice little usable zoom. Now before I get started don't forget hit the subscribe button if you want to subscribe to the channel and join our merry crowd of subscribers. A great little community on the, on the Micro Four Thirds channel here. And hit the notification bell below and don't forget to hit the all as well. That will give you notifications every time there's a new video uploaded. And as you go through if you enjoy this video give it a nice big like because that helps YouTube to promote it to more people to see. And also if you do enjoy it if you want to keep the channel active because it takes a little bit of running this channel there's a PayPal link below where you can leave me enough for a cup of coffee which would be really appreciated and helps the channel succeed and survive. Well, as I say I've got the lens here attached to my GX8 which is a great little camera for it. Now if you remember in my 14mm f2.5 video there's a, a link above to that you remember that I had a little bit of problem on the GX8 insofar as it was fine for the in-body stabilization um, when you were taking stills but when I went on the video because the lens didn't have IS then the, it switched the camera's eye off, uh, IS off as well so you had a totally unstabilized video lens. This is different. This little lens has got Mega OIS in and if you go for the version 1.2 of the, of the firmware which I've just upgraded this to not only does it activate the OIS on the camera the in-body in stabilization to work between the camera and the Mega OIS on this but it also complies to the OIS, OIS 2 standard on the camera so it's giving you the maximum that you can get out of a Lumix camera talking between a lens and a, and a body for the stabilization. Now before we go any further let's have a look at some of the specs on this lens. As you know I'm not a great one for enjoying specs but specs are necessary. If we take the lenses first of all we have eight lenses in seven groups. In that tiny little camera body there's eight lenses believe it or not. Three of those lenses are spherical lenses and one is an ED or an extra dispersion lens and that's to try and cut down on some of the lens flare and some of the problems that we get associated with things like chromatic aberration and edging and all sorts of other little um, light corrective sort of things that the lens does. So a really nice little lens in such a small package. The diaphragm is a seven blade diaphragm and it's, again it's got curved blades. You don't get a huge amount of bokeh on this lens. It, you have to work if you want to get bokeh effects on it because it's not the fastest lens in the, in the uh, lineup and only going up to 32mm which is a 35mm camera or full frame uh, equivalent of a 64mm lens it's difficult to get some of that sort of super um, super uh, out of focus background and use the, the bokeh effect to its maximum but it is possible with a little bit of skill and dexterity but again seven blades gives nice if you get bokeh balls it does give them nice rounded corners instead of the, the more angular cut off ones. As I say, it's a tiny little lens, absolutely minute little thing. It has a focal range from 12mm to 32 which gives a full frame equivalent of 24 to 64mm. Which isn't a huge amount, but it covers that all important 25mm which is the full frame equivalent of 50 That to me is a real sweet spot, that's a nice medium lens. It used to come as standard if you, when you, in the old days of film cameras, that on a 35mm camera you got a 50mm lens was your standard lens. And the full frame, the 25mm, has the equivalent um, angle of view and that is great and this lens nicely covers it. Maximum aperture on this is f22 so if, you've been, if you're going into landscape photography and you want a really wide depth of field you're going to get it on this quite comfortably. f22 seems to be about the norm on micro four thirds lenses these days and it's a very very usable range as well. Now the lens itself is minute, it really is. Without the lens caps on it weighs only 70 grams. Normally you'll probably have a front lens cap on this and it probably adds no more than 2 to 3 grams. So you're talking 72, 73 grams for the, uh, for the lens fit the front of the camera. So small you hardly even notice it. And in its packed up position it's 55 millimeters across and less than, uh, less than an inch, 24 and a half um, millimeters from front to back. Although when you go to use this is in the park position, it's locked, you can't take any photos. If you have a look on the back of the camera in fact when it's in this position you'll see this, it actually tells you that you can't take a photo and locks the camera off. But all we have to do, give it a quick rotate, just a small amount, get it onto the 12mm and that's now the camera active and able to take photographs. And a very very nice little sweep between 12 and 32, very very easy to use. 
One thing on this though, it does not have a manual focus ring. So if you're if you using manual focus a lot, you're gonna have to do it on the back of the camera electronically. This does not have a manual focus ring. Front filter diameter on this is the same as on the um, the 45mm Olympus F1.8. It's a, a 37mm thread. So again, quite common in the Micro Four Thirds world, but if you get on the larger formats, it's, it's unheard of at this sort of size. So yes, 37mm thread, but it does have a thread on it. Doesn't come with any form of lens hood though, which is a bit of a shame. Normally the Lumix lenses do come with lens hoods. This is a bit of a shame that it doesn't, but they are very easily available and quite cheap to get on the internet. So if you if you are wanting one, easy enough to get. And the 12 millimeter, most lens hoods will actually fit this. You don't get so much problem with the, with the cutting the corners off on it. It's not too wide for that. So what's it like in use? Well, I find it great actually, I really do. Um, I, it's one of those, again, like I described uh, the 14 mil. it's one of those lenses that you just want to have and put in your pocket or put in your camera bag and use. It is tiny, stored up as I say, it's less than an inch in depth and it's, you know, 55 mil across. It is minute, only weighing 70 to 72 grams. It, again, you don't even notice you've got it. Now, one of the things I get asked about this, this came as a kit lens. This came as a kit lens, and I think it was on the GM2, possibly was the first one, but it's been on various of the GM and GF and GX uh, range of cameras since then. And I know that some of the GX9s have still come with this lens as standard. This really is a well thought of lens. And we talk about kit lenses almost in a derogatory way, but to tell you the truth, a good well-used kit lens can be fantastic in the results it puts out. Yes, it doesn't have some of the pro features. Yes, it doesn't have some of the investment on that. But these you can buy new for £299 retail. That's the, that's the full price on this. There are discounts available on these for new. If you want to buy one of these second hand, I purchased this from MPB for £99 plus the postage. So it was about £104 that I paid for this lens delivered to my door. And this was in excellent condition. It really was. And for that sort of price, it's again one of those no-brainers. I know £100 to people or $100 in the States. It seems to be about a one-to-one -one exchange rate. I know that it's, it is a substantial amount of money. But when we're talking photo equipment, when we're talking lenses, £100 is actually dirt cheap. It really is. And I say this saying a few times, cheap as chips. I really believe it is. It's fantastic. Now, as I say, it's a kit lens and kit lenses do get looked down upon. But I've seen some fantastic results. And in the kit lens sort of um, field, this actually is a really, really good performance. Former. I started out in my Micro Four Thirds days when I was tempted away from full frame on the Canon and the APS-C on the Canon. I was given um, the use of the uh, GX1 and also my EM5 Mark I. And the lens I had on that was the Lumix G Series 14 to 42. Now, yes, we got a little bit more range at the top and the 42, another 10 millimeter on that. But the two millimeter, it makes a difference. A two millimeter between 12 and 14, I find very, very useful getting that 12 mil. And to be honest, the results that I'm getting from this, I think are superior to what I was getting from the 14 to 42. So as a straightforward kit lens, it's very, very useful, very usable, and gives some fantastic results. Now, we're not all putting up huge, great, big prints. If we're not all putting sort of 40 by 30 prints out there, the majority of us are putting things onto um, Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, those social media platforms. Um, and this is far, far superior to anything you're going to need to get onto those platforms. So I really think that this is a lens you should seriously consider. Now you see on some of the photographs I took later on, I took some in, uh, in the city and I was deliberately trying to induce some lens flare into this by pointing to the sun. I had some reflections off a window, um, which should be really poor insofar as giving you um, problems on the lens. And also somewhere, I've just got the sun peeping from the side of a building. You'll see them at the end. Keep watching until the end and you'll see the, the sample pictures. But I was really knocked out. It took me an awful lot of effort to get any form of, of lens flare on this, which I thought was fantastic. So when I did say about having a lens hood, maybe a lens hood isn't that necessary. But what a lens hood does is it gives protection as well. So I, I do tend to put lens hoods on as much for protection in case I drop the camera with the lens on than I do for its uh, optical effects. Now I've tried this on both the Olympus EM1 Mark II, uh, the Lumix G9, which I'm filming this on, and also my GX8, which you can see here. And to be honest, 
things like um, barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, chromatic aberration, edging, I just can't really see much of them at all. I've been pushing it fairly hard to do it. Now on all those cameras there is um, quite a decent lens profile built in for this lens, um, especially if you go to the, firm, the version 1.2 firmware on this and you keep your camera firmware updates up to date. So most of the effects that the lens can possibly do are taken out by the camera itself. I haven't tried this on my EM1 Mark 1 and my EM1 Mark 1 does tend to fail a little bit on some of the Lumix lenses purely for the fact that the older that the older camera doesn't have the profiles for some of the Lumix lenses in there. So if you do get have a, a an older uh, EM1 Mark 1, EM5 Mark 1 or even the EM10 Mark 2 you might get a few issues if you're using this on um, Olympus. But every time I've had these on my EM1 Mark 1, I've found the effects not to be too bad and I can usually get them out very, very easy in post-processing in something like Lightroom or the supplied software with the cameras. So my conclusion, £100 for this lens, just go and buy it, really. Put it in your camera case, use it. It's the sort of thing which is fantastic. It means that if you are going out, especially doing something like street photography, if you're going out doing street photography, the only bad part is you can't preset your focus. But it focuses so, so quickly, it's un true. If you go out with a small camera, it looks unobtrusive. This is on the GX8, which is actually for a rangefinder style Lumix camera, quite a big one. But, uh, you know, it just doesn't look imposing. It doesn't put people off and doesn't make them start worrying. I really can't think of a better recommendation than, than that for this lens. It really is superb and you're not going to be disappointed with the results. Yes, some people will say, well, you need more professional lens or something you know, like that, you know, to be given credibility but I don't go through that with the credibility side I let the, the photographs and the images speak for themselves and I've never had a problem on on most of my shots taken on kit lenses and this as I say quality wise is equally as good as any kit lens I've used on the micro four thirds format just go and buy it it's worth it you'll enjoy it so let's have a look at some of those photographs I've taken. So I took the camera out both in the city and also the talking town to take a few sample photographs. Have a look and see what you think, especially the ones where I was saying I was trying to induce the lens flare. I think you're going to be impressed. Once again, my name is Brian James, a Micro Four Thirds guy. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, as I say, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber to join our merry crew of uh, subscribers on this Four Thirds channel. Really good bunch of people. Don't forget to hit the notifications and hit the all, tick the all box and make sure that you'll get notifications every time I upload a new video. And also give me a big thumbs up and a like because it really does make a difference to how YouTube treats its uh, content creators. Well, before we go on, do you use this lens? Is this, a le is this a lens that you use? Give me comments below if you, if you are. Let me know how you get on with it. If it's a lens that you've been interested in, again, drop me a comment and tell me why you're interested in it. If it's a lens that you've used and didn't like, again, tell me below. I'm really interested in your comments. And if you've got an alternative to this again drop me a comment the comments really are useful I read as many of them as I possibly can I always put a little thumbs up to say that I've read it um, and that really again helps the channel to spread to more people and if you've enjoyed this channel don't forget to give us a bit of support by just making a small donation by buying me a cup of coffee on the PayPal link below really is appreciated and it does keep the channel going whatever you do though this is Brian James saying keep on taking your camera out keep on taking photographs and keep on enjoying your photography See you all next time. Bye-bye.